And lastly, we are going to look at adding storage to the model to reduce the site discharge in our post development case. We're going to create a new scenario in which we're going to add a storage node to represent the detention basin. We are then going to add a primary and secondary outlet to the uh, detention basin, and then we're going to reroute the subcatchment flows through the detention basin and then run the scenario and analyze the results. So firstly, we're going to create a new scenario by using the Create Scenario button, and we're going to give it the name Mitigated. We want to make sure that we're copying the existing developed scenario, and then press OK. Make sure that we're working in the Mitigated scenario. Now we're going to add the Storage node. To do this, we're going to select Node from the drop-down, press the new object icon, and we're going to add a node towards the downstream end of our developed catchment. We're going to give it the ID basin, select the type to storage, and ensure that our system type is storm. Press OK. In the properties dialog, we're going to set the ground level for our basin to 12. And then we're going to check on the relative stages to use the, best, the depth based storage values. Then we're going to click on the three ellipses and define the storage array. We're going to create a storage area 900 square meters and a level of 1.5 meters high. This is the initial sizing of our basin. Once we have entered in the data, we select OK. Now we're going to use the new object tool again to insert a node into the channel close to the downstream end. So select new object and then make sure we click on an area near the channel. To split it, we're going to check on split, make sure we have our channel link selected. We're going to change our type to break and we're going to give it the name break. Once we have entered in the relevant data, we can select OK. You can see that the break node has now split up the channel. And if we were to go into the properties of the channels, we can see that that has adjusted automatically our downstream invert level, depending on the length along the channel that the break node was inserted. We are now going to add our storage outlets. So again, selecting link from the drop down of our new object tool we're going to create the primary outlet, which is going to be a pipe from our basin to our channel. So using the snapping tool, we're going to select first the basin and draw the link to our new break node. We're going to make sure that the type is set to conduit and that we have storm as our system type. Click OK. This should bring up the object properties for our conduit. And here we're going to give our pipe a diameter of 300 mils. This will automatically adjust the height if we have the shape ID set to circular. Scrolling further down, we see some inline validation er errors where we need to populate the properties. We're going to set our upstream invert level to the invert of a basin, which is 12. And then we want to set the downstream invert level to the level of the channel at that point. So to do that, we can select one of the channels and we're going to take the invert level at the node. So you can copy, come back to the new conduit and paste in the downstream invert level.
Now we want to draw a second link connecting the same two nodes. We're going to represent this with a bend so that the conduits aren't laying over the top of each other. This is going to be our secondary outlet, which is going to be a weir or spillway in this case. So we're going to keep link selected, press the new object. First we snap to the basin node again, holding down the Alt key, we're going to drop a vertex there, and then we're going to finish by snapping to the end of our break node. The type for this link is going to be weir, and we're going to leave the system type set to storm. Press OK. In our properties dialog, we're going to set our crest level for the weir as 12.8. So that's 800 mils above the base of our basin. And the width of our weir along the top is going to be 3 meters. We're going to change our discharge coefficient to 0 0.64 for both the the discharge coefficient and the secondary discharge coefficient. In ICM, the discharge coefficient is not the same as the commonly documented weir coefficient. To convert a standard weir coefficient to a discharge coefficient for ICM, we're going to divide the value by the square root of gravity. For example, a weir coefficient of 2 would equal a discharge coefficient of 0 0.64 in ICM. The secondary discharge coefficient is only used if a roof height is specified and if the flow becomes pressurized. That will not be the case for this scenario. Now that the basin is set up, we need to reroute the subcatchment flows through the basin before it gets to the outlet. So back in the geo plan, we want to double click on our development site subcatchment. C4, and we're going to change drains to to node, and we're going to select our basin node. We can see now graphically that the subcatchment is draining to our basin node. Once we have set that up, we're going to validate and commit the network. So back in our master database, right click, commit changes. And I'm going to add the comments workshop 10 added mitigated scenario. Just make sure that everything's validated. I just need to commit those changes again to run. And OK. Now we're going to set up the run object for our mitigated scenario and analyze the results after the flows have been routed through the basin. Again, we double click on the model group and open up a new run model. Actually, to do this quicker, we might just open up the old post development run. We're going to change post to mitigated. Update to the latest version, select only the mitigated scenario, and we're going to keep everything the same. Let's run the simulations.
going to check that all of those have run. Got a few more to complete. And they have all been successful. Now that that's complete, we want to create a new statistics template as we have changed the configuration of our channel. So what we want to do now is selecting the downstream channel coming from our break node. We're going to go back to our model group, go new InfoWorks, and then we're going to select statistics template. We're going to call this ensemble analysis channel flows basin press OK and here similar to what we did in the previous statistics template we're going to keep the downstream flow attribute and our link and we're going to add our current selection check that it is our link coming from our break node and we're going to save the statistics template. Once that's done, we're going to close the tab and then we're going to generate the statistics report. Drag in our mitigated run, our new template, and produce the report. Select yes. We wait for those statistics to complete calculating. Once that's done, we go to our ensemble summary and then we're going to select one of the attributes for our 1% storm, go to statistics and export the ensemble box plot. We're going to save this with mitigated at the end of our default name and then we're going to display the mean and show the mean marks again. Here we can see our critical duration of 25 minutes has given us a outflow at the downstream end of our channel as 9.07 cubic meters per second. If we remember from our previous workshops, our post-development case had an outflow of around about 9.3 and our pre-development had a downstream outflow of around about 9.1. So adding the basin in this instance has helped reduce the flows at the outlet channel even better than they were in the first place. Now, as we've gone through this model, we take note that our initial sizing of our channel and our basins has only been done at a first pass. We might want to come back and optimize these sizes, um, I guess to save costs in our project. Another thing we might want to look at to validate the size of our basin is the depth and check that is an acceptable depth within ARNR guidelines. A nice and easy way to do this would be to create another statistic uh, template. So I'm just going to minimize our box and whisker plot application, go back to our geo plan, make sure that we have selected our basin. And then I'm going to go click, right click on the model group, new InfoWorks, and I'm going to select statistics template again. I'm going to name this Ensemble Analysis Basin Level. Press OK. We're going to change our location type to node, and our attribute is going to be level. We're going to add our current selection, make sure that our basin node has been selected, and save the template. We're going to close the tab, and then we're going to run the statistics analysis again for our mitigated scenario. So go results, statistic reports, bring in the mitigated run, bring across the basin level, and produce the report. Wait for that to complete. We're going to go across to the ensemble summary, select one of the levels for our 1% event, 
and then we're going to produce an ensemble box plot. Call it basin level. And now we'll just show in the mean and our mean marks again. If we remember when we set up the basin that our ground level is uh, at 12 meters AHD and our basin is 1.5 meters higher. We can see that the mean level for our critical storm is at 13.1, so that is 1.1 meters above our base. If we want to check the maximum as well, we can say that this is about almost 1.2 meters above the, the basin ground level. This I believe would be acceptable within the ARNR guidelines and we know that it is not overtopping the embankment of our basin, which is 1.5 metres above the ground level. If we wanted to reduce this level, we could potentially increase the width of our weir, which is at 